Yeah, looks good. All right. Hi. Co- is it is it Cornelio? Yeah. yeah. Where where is the emphasis on the last part? Yeah, on on yeah. Cornelio. Cor- Cornelio? Yeah. So no Leo. Eu eu Cornelio. Cornelio. Yeah. We're pretty yeah. fast. Yeah, 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 we're speaking right. a bit fast. Cornelio. Yeah. Cornelio. Sounds a bit uh, Italian. Almost. Yeah, maybe, maybe. Very very some Italians. Old Roman empires with his name. I guess so. Uh, first thing first. Oh, by the way, for those who are watching, try to spot the product placement during the video. Uh, so first things first, I always ask people, what brings you to Latvia? Um, actually, I'm participating in an um, arbitration conference here. Do you it's mean called... like dispute arbitration? Yes, yes. Mm-hmm. It's um, kind of Baltic arbitration days. What? It's a kind of... Baltic arbitration days? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Never heard of them. And it's organized by a um, company, BTNT. BND from uh, from here, from Riga. Is it a law firm? Yeah, a law firm. BND. Uh, B uh, BND BND. Hmm. B and D. 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 Interesting. All right. Yeah, and uh, in um, in collaboration with uh, uh, Stockholm Economic Institute from Riga, and. Uh, Dutch Institute of Arbitration. So we are gathering together uh, mainly scholars, practitioners from from the field of arbitration, but as well we invited some students mm. as me, uh, and we discussed about some uh, some issues, some interesting um, uh, topics on on uh, arbitration, which are nowadays very important, like New York Convention on enforcement of of arbitral awards and uh, corporal dispute arbi- uh, arbitration mm-hmm. so yeah so it was like a two days conference and it was quite uh, quite full of a lot of information it was very interesting so what was the point for you then was it just for informational purposes or did you want to make some contact so you can come to uh, work in latvia or for uh, or for that matter, work in general for for big law firms or something similar. Uh, not necessarily to come to to Latvia. Where I mean, actually, this kind of conference they have like two main purposes. Mm. One is like for information and to gather some 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 knowledge which you cannot gather in other places. But as well, it's a platform of communication and interaction and making contacts and partnerships. Uh, between practitioners in in uh, in these fields, um, so yes, of course, uh, uh, one of the main purposes was to uh, to know some new people in uh, in the field of arbitration all over the Europe mainly, mm-hmm. um, and to why not to to establish some contacts for future internships in uh, in law firms. So it's uh, it's very very important for me. So what's your outlook? Do you want to be a lawyer? <coughs> yes. Why? Why, man? Uh, <laughs> because there are not enough lawyers. <laughs> yeah, for um, sure. Not enough. Yeah, actually, um, it's uh, it's one of my patients to 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 plead to argue a certain point of view, and as well to. Or I mean, a passion. Yeah. Hmm. And and to to defend someone and someone's interests. Um, but you want to get that paper, right? It's oh. not like you would like to f- do that for free. Um, I mean, actually, I I'm helping a lot of people for free as well. It's not it's not only the the things of the, Wait, the so matter of money. You are you are quite young. Are you saying that you're already going to court for people? Uh, not to I'm. Okay, I'm actually helping some people from Moldova that have some issues, some, some, uh, some disputes. Tell me about and, it. Yeah, but actually, I, 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 I am not entitled to to represent them into the court. Mm. But I can go with them. I can help them different things. But I, I am not just representing them in a court. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, and as well, I have an NGO. What? An, an non-governmental organization. Ah, kind all of. right. right. Which is called Edu Just. 
in uh, Ed you just yeah Ed just like so I'm guessing it's about education yes education and justice and for education for justice or just uh, justice education justice education mm -hmm. yeah and we make lessons of uh, of legal education for uh children and teenagers from um, from Republic of Moldova hmm? for children i mean f from legal point of view we are children <laughs> give me an I mean, example i mean our main focus is 14 18 all right so what well, what would be an example of a lesson you give them uh so mainly up to now we taught lessons regarding youth delinquency oh and we teach teach them about how not to get caught by the police i see uh, i see <laughs> no not necessarily we speak them about how to to interact in the society and how to deal with other people in a way not to commit some illegal acts hmm. what acts are considered illegal what to do and what not to do in general from from a perspective of criminal law um, we explain them the consequences of some criminal deeds uh, and we try to persuade them in order not to commit and to take this wrong part in in, in their life um, so yeah and this is one of the activities which I am I'm doing from pleasure not for for some revenues um, yeah I mean everyone which is doing who is doing a job he mainly makes money but but I think it's very important to do something which you like and to um, to have a certain uh, impact of the people with whom you are working and to have I don't know um, a good uh, good impact on, on a society to I mean it's not only everything always about money and, and the same is about our now, now you're going all hippy dippy on me <laughs> so how did you find uh, the, the NGO? Um, or did they find you? Uh, I found it. Hmm. I, I mean, I I started. Uh, I had some. I have some friends interested in 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 this field as well. Hmm. So we just decided to to create and to organize such kind of lessons. And how often do you do any events um, for those for those criminal children of yours? Oh, it's not necessary for criminal children. We are going to schools for summer camps. I mean, uh, regarding. Uh, but you should start getting some some money for that. Um, I mean, it, it sounds yeah. that that you yeah. could. We we yeah we we do some projects. We do them for free. I mm -hmm. mean, like we uh, doing it like bona fide. We say it in right. our term. In, uh, we as well, due to the fact that we gather some grants, we can manage to organize oh. some, yeah, yeah, some some funds and some little like uh, insignificant wages for for the members as well. Mm -hmm. um, and this helps as well us to organize, I don't know, transportation, some logistical stuff where to buy some, I don't know, and basically things. administrative costs at least. Yes, yeah. I mean, it's not for purpose of of making money, but we we can afford sometimes some things due to due to different grants. So, what's your outlook then? Now you are are you still studying? Yes, yes. I'm third year, mm -hmm. so I have one more year. I'll finish for the bachelor. Ba for bachelor, yes, mm -hmm. yes. Um, and then I intend to to make a master, and then I'll am in arbitration. Yep. So, uh, my professional background will be arbitration, like this alternative form of dispute resolution. And I thought arbitration usually concerns uh, commercial uh, disputes, right? But yeah. it's, but it's not necessarily the case, I guess. Yeah, it's not necessarily. There are mm -hmm. different disputes sold in, in arbitration. Mainly, there is commercial and uh, investment arbitration. Mm -hmm. But there can be sports arbitration, uh, corporate well, arbitration. Well, I would I would put sports still under commercial. Yeah, in a way, I mean, it's, it's kind, mostly kind sports. Kind of commercial, but businesses. with a, a certain specific feature. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, it's. I mean, if 
in general to divide the way of solving disputes you can go either to the court or in the case that law allow you and in there certain kinds of disputes you can go to arbitration because it's it's much more fast you, you can solve very fast your your dispute you have a possibility to 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 choose your arbitrator who will be much more professional in in this field of uh, of law so the the, the quality of uh, of solving the dispute will be much more higher, so that's why it's it's becoming more and more popular. You know what the weird thing is? Everything you say, it sounds so similar to uh, the Latvian system, and I guess it's all over the place. I mean, similar similar regulations make similar systems, make similar uh, conditions, so. Either you are in Moldova, either you are in Latvia, either you are, I don't know, I guess Germany, for instance, it's, it would be pretty similar. In, in a sense, uh, you probably can get your LLM mm -hmm. and work all over Europe. Mainly yes, because, yeah, because actually arbitration needs the uh, same rules almost everywhere. And um, and usually it's used for for solving of international disputes, which mean you have to deal with either international conventions, either with with system of laws from different countries. So if you specialize in in, in arbitration, you can work in in many countries. In necessary, it's not necessarily uh, to, for example, if you study national law of. Of Latvia, you'll not go to Moldova and practice because it's useless. Your is it? Is knowledge. It so you are you are the first time in Latvia, right? Yes. Yes. So what are, what is your impression? Uh, it's a very beautiful country. I, I even did not expect to to see all that great architecture. To to see all this, it, the, the city is very beautiful. Mm -hmm. um, and. Um, uh, day before yesterday, we we had an, um, a city tower, so we saw a lot of beautiful places here around the city, and it was uh, it was amazing. This architecture, the streets, the, um, and the people. I met many people from here, from Riga, mm -hmm. and I'd say it's very welcoming. Um, um, I mean, peop the the nation and the people who live here. Um, and you offered to host me and thank you very much for it um, yeah and I, I would say I would I feel myself as uh, as home here have you seen any differences from your home country uh, yes yeah because actually for example our capital Kishno was mainly destroyed in the Second World War so mo most of the buildings are was it yeah it, it was by whom uh, by all the parties which were involved. Wait a second. At that time, Moldova was not really necessarily Moldova, right? It was part of. Uh, was yeah. it part of Czechoslovakia? No, no. We are between Romania and Ukraine. So that time we were um, at the beginning a part of Romania, then a part of Soviet Union, then again a part of Romanian. Mm. Nazis uh, and fascists union. Mm -hmm. I mean, we were under control of Romania temporarily. I mean, when uh, Romanian German army were like attacking Soviet Union, and then again we we were under Soviet Union when it got back. So we were like, and o during all this period, like everyone was shooting and was destroying everything I see I see so usually armies when they got back they destroyed everything and not to, to let anything for for the opposed party mm -hmm. so would you say you Moldova has similarities with Romania uh, yeah we speak pretty similar language oh do you uh, yeah it's ah. different dialects mm, uh, interesting and um uh, uh, yeah, we have a lot of similarities, I would say. Um, and science, we are like nearby. Neighbors. Have, yeah, neighbors. Mm -hmm. We have a lot of relations to them. I mean, economical, social, cultural and so on. So how's life in Moldova? Because I've heard of Romania. It's a 
20 million uh, country, was it? Yeah. 20 million? Because I've, I've heard the funny things about Romania. Basically, it's it's sort of the European Union, but it's economically almost like a outsourcing country for German and other other uh, countries. Uh, but basically, big, big companies from Germany and other, other EU countries. Because uh, I remember one Romanian dude told me the average wage was... I think he said uh, below 500 euros per month and so he said yeah so you have many many different companies from all over Europe coming outsourcing to Romania and I, and I said but you are the European in the European Union how would that be possible he says well I don't know but that's the way it is so uh, is it similar in Moldova that you have many many uh, other other country uh, companies coming to Moldova um uh, no not no. really we are not in eu and we do not have uh well but you are basically, yeah. basically geographically yeah, yeah right we have there geographically good links with are you participating in the europe eurovision yeah yeah see see fair enough i mean um in regard of conditions of life in in our country uh medium salary is around 300 300 euros but it, it depends because in um but you don't in, need uh, a visa to come, yeah we have right? free visa regime with you but it's not necessarily the schengen no. area right uh i mean yeah most with most of the countries from eu except mm -hmm. of britain and ireland we we have free visa ah yeah well then so it's yeah. So how come the European countries are not coming to Moldova then? What did you do uh, to them? I think it's issue with... Did you scare them? Uh, <laughs> no, no. So how, how many people live in Moldova? Around officially three and a half million. Hmm. But none officially, I think around what two and a half. So what do you mean? So officially and not officially? Officially, officially according to our national survey, which took place four year ago. Oh, you mean that uh, population yeah. is declining? Yeah, I mean, actually, officially... Or decreasing? Yeah, it's from one hand, it's decreasing. Mm -hmm. But there are a lot of people going outside of a country. Yeah. So it's more than, than one million of people of active population working either in Russia, either in Italy. From Moldova? Yeah. yeah. Why in Russia? Uh, maybe due to our, I don't know, historical links, due to the fact that people from Moldova know Russian well. Hmm. So they, in, Interesting. I mean, when we become independent. Um, when did you become independent? In 1991. And when was Moldova founded? Uh, also 91? Probably not. No, no, in 1365. What? In 1365. Don't I mean, give me that. In the full 14th century, I mean, all the old, there's uh, old history of our country. Well, all right, those are probably the origins. But here, for instance, Latvia, this year is the sort of um, what's the what's the what's the word when uh, when hundred years have passed uh, centenary Cent yeah something like that yeah, Cent yeah. centenary or whatever yeah. but the, the basic idea was that 1918 some some parliamentarians got together in a theater and declared now yeah. latvia is an independent country right and then other countries started uh, recognizing the the jure de facto right and yeah well I guess 41 was the, was the time around that time when we started getting occupied by either the Germans or the Russians, whatever. And then we gained, regained independence in 91 again, right? So this year we celebrate 100 years of Latvia, but sort of uh, it's been, well, a bit more than 27 years since we regained the independence from the USSR. So... Mm -hmm. Would it be similar to Moldova that ninety one you regained the independence? Yeah, in nineteen ninety one we regained independence, mm -hmm. but it was like called country of Moldova, which was like founded 
centuries ago. That sounds so. so I mean, we were like kind of independent country. So what is the? You probably on your calendar you probably have a date that you say, oh, this is the anniversary for Moldova, right? Yeah. So what what so will be the next? Yeah, it's the same. It's at, as Latvia. I mean, in 1991, on 27 uh, of August, we we officially proclaimed ourselves independent. Well, what I mean is, this year, in November, we will say, oh, look, Latvia is 100 years old. So mm -hmm. for you, when will be the date you'll say, oh, Moldova is um, so, such and such amount of years old? We do not say one more than this, I mean... 28 years oh. all right i mean we don't use the the old dates i mean from 14 centuries because actually they're not one exact date and i mean mm -hmm. and usually during that period even though we were like a country we were dependent from different empires like hungarian empire As Polish everybody empire, yeah a lot of empires mm -hmm. but we had our autonomy Meanwhile, and we we were as well a bit of independent, like for that times. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, and um, and if to to come to to the situation, economical situation of my country, due to the fact that a lot of people are going abroad um, to Europe or to to Russia, the issue is that. Um, the the people that remain in in a country were not a lot of them, um, so that is why the, the the number of population is quite low in comparison with what it was I don't know twenty years ago for example, mm -hmm. um, and uh, as well, um, our economy is not quite well developed. I mean, it was it wasn't created something after it was destroyed Soviet Union so we do not have almost we almost do not have big companies kind of uh, what is what is the biggest company in Moldova national company um I don't know which is the biggest probably one. some agriculture Krikova, I think is a big one some food is, yeah it's wine wine production yeah oh. Moldovian are, wine yeah, right. we we are the first country in the world on on the production of wine. What? It's almost two hundred. Would, would if I would have a French dude over here? Would he, would he uh, say that you're wrong? No, no. I mean, maybe Fra yeah, France is the first place in the world for the uh, total amount of production of wine, but to take the to take the the quantity of wine per capita i mean per, per person living in a country yeah. we're the first really yeah we produce around 200 liters so everybody is just walking around drunk <laughs> um depends from from the time <laughs> no but is it but is uh, still uh, the most popular beverage beer um is it quite popular mm -hmm. i mean in the city when people i don't know going out somewhere they use a lot of beer but i would say it's like equal popularity however i didn't any survey or were uh, a research in this field mm -hmm. but it, both the wine and the beer are very popular sounds good sounds good so uh, tell me about moldova because i've actually never really heard much about it I've I've heard the, the name, I've I've imagined it it should be, well, somewhat warmer than Latvia, in in general, well, and since you grow uh, grapes, so yeah, I yeah, suppose I, that's true. But other than that, yeah. So, can you can you advertise your country for me? Yes, yes, of course. So, um, besides the wine, which is, I think one of the greatest wine in the world due to our culture of growing of making wine and um, our technologies d d as well actually we are like much more um, southern than Latvia so it's quite warm in, in Moldova mm -hmm. uh, and we have uh, very good soil so there is growing a lot of 
um, a lot of uh, products, a lot of, I don't know, plants and, uh, um, and trees. And we have a lot of agricultural products which are of high quality and they're very tasty. Mm-hmm. I mean, due to the fact that they're natural without kind of chemicals and um, they're like biological, as it's seen, it's said here in Europe. Do you have the same uh, regulations when it comes to some, let's say, food additives or something like that? Uh, it's they're not the same as in Europe. Do you have GMO? Uh, not so much, not so much. But some? Um, in regard of soya, hmm. because we have soya as well. But I mean. Most of most of the lands are not mo- most of the products which are planted are not with so or not with uh, um, modified genetic products except mm-hmm. of soya and yeah and I think it's even though we do not have so much regulations at he- as here in Europe uh, people grow a lot of products which are n- like without chemicals. And as well, it's it's uh, popular to grow in your own garden, the fruits and different plants. I Are mean, you saying it's popular simply because people like their homegrown food, or j- is it just more convenient than looking for farmers markets? Because we used to have many many um, <clears throat> what's it called gardens mm-hmm. uh, in the households of Latvia, right? But uh, I think. It sort of drastically changed after the early 2000s in the sense that many um, supermarkets, many, well, basically the infrastructure improved so much that it's almost more convenient to go to the grocery store than to grow your own uh, vegetables. Most, well, many people still have, let's say, some land uh, in the countryside where there may be, I don't know, during the summer. Maybe they have some crops or, or, you know, have some strawberries or whatever. But yeah, usually it's just grocery store, more convenient. Um, yeah, actually in, in the capital, we're in, in uh, bigger cities from Moldova, people as well mostly go to, to market and buy products. Mm-hmm. While in villages and small cities, there's like... From one hand, there's like tradition. I mean, people from old times are growing everything at their home, all the products which they are consuming, most of them. Um, we have as well a lot of marketplaces where people sell their homemade products. Uh, so it's all, all as well very popular. But in regard of like mass production, I think many of our products are uh, like agricultural products are sell are, uh, are sold abroad or they are sold in big markets in in big cities mm-hmm. so in the small cities or in villages you quite not access a lot of vegetables except of some of them or or none of them even um, and as well there is like this economical problem because people there are a lot of people that cannot afford themselves to to go to buy i mean maybe here it's it's worth to to go to grocery but in a country where i mean in a village where people can gain 100 200 euros per month they quite do not afford themselves to but if Moldova is outside the European Union, you probably should have also a lower level of prices, right? Yeah, yeah, it's... So, for much. instance, how does a liter... Well, how much does a liter of uh, gasoline cost? Um, now it's raised up to almost one euro. Well, it's not <coughs> It's not that different from... So, gasoline, us, gasoline, sorry, gasoline. Actually, I thought about benzene. Yeah, benzene it's one euro, but gasoline I'm not sure. No, no, I, I mean, think is there a difference? Or that that, yeah. that is what I meant. Benzene. Oh yeah, then yeah. it's it's it it's it around yeah, one well, euro. It's not that big of a difference, I guess. Sort of. Yeah, I it's, guess in Latvia it's one euro twenty or one euro thirty, perhaps. Yeah, it's not. I'm not sure. I mean, 
depends from the product. I mean, electronic products, I think mostly are more expensive than in Europe because they're imported. Um, agricultural products are... Wait, so you are saying that in Moldova they are more expensive? Yeah, in Moldova, yeah. Oh, really? Because we import, import all the electronic stuff, all technology, kind of. Ah, well, you maybe have some um, import tariffs as well? It's import tariffs. Do you have custom tax for them? It, it's Yeah, it's custom oh. tax and... And, uh, oh, that's too bad. And, so when is and, Moldova and joining the EU? Let's start talking business. Uh, when, when is Moldova joining the EU? Once you have your LLM hmm? ready, once you have your LLM ready, Moldova, <laughs> then Moldova will be prepared. Um, actually, uh, nobody knows in this regard because it, it's even even though we will strive towards, but it depends a lot of our political will. I think you probably it, would like to join, right? I mean, you are I, there. I mean, the population is very divided. But there are only two million. Well, what, what's the divide? Do you uh, have uh, Do you have different ethnicities living in Moldova? Yes, yes, we have. Besides Moldovans, we have Romanians, we have Ukrainians, Russians, Bulgarians, Gagauzian uh -huh. people. Who? Gagauzian. Gagauzian. Yeah, it's who, who are those? Um, they're like Gaga Orthodox. Gagauzian. Yeah, I'm not sure if it's right. Did you did you make that up or is it real? Gagauzian. Yeah, it's it's. <laughs> Where do they live? The, yeah, the, it's uh, it's in south of a country. They're like um, Gagauzian Turkish people, which oh. remain in our country and become Christians. Why is the religion so important? I mean, wouldn't they be Gagauzians if they wouldn't be Christians? So basically, they are, yeah. the, the, they are Turkish people, right? Or at least um, from Turkish descent. I don't know. Well, their language, because they have a kind of Gagauzian language, is quite <laughs> similar. Man, so, I don't know why, but it sounds so funny to me. Gagauzian. Oh, so, there is... Um, so it's, a, it's technically a, almost like an ethnicity then. Gagauzian. Yeah, it's an so it's ethnicity. Gagauzian. I I don't know their language, but it's it's said that it's much similar to Turkish. Hmm. Well, I would and guess then that they are just some some branch of Turkish people. Um, I don't know. They actually consider themselves Gagauzians and Moldavians. I don't know about do you know, their. Do you know why that is? Almost always, people who are regionally located. They want to be, oh, we are by ourselves, we are not that or this, we are... It's like Spain and Catalonia. Oh, no, no, right. we don't have such no, no. issues. No, no, I mean, they yeah. they are not content with the fact that, well, we are Spaniards just living in a certain region from, of Spain, right? They consider themselves, no, we are, we are something different, we are not Spanish people, we are Catalonians, for instance. We want our own government. We are. We want our own. And I always think, how come? It sounds like you. You mentioned the Gagauzians. Still funny to me the word Gagauzian. Uh, they sound quite similar. That they want to consider themselves totally, totally something different. No, I mean it's not them considering something different, and they are totally okay with living in Moldova, and they consider. Uh, themselves Moldovan and oh, right. I mean, ethnicity, ethnicity, like they're like ethnically ethnicity, different, different, uh, a bit different from from the majority. The so the basically, so basically, ethnically, they have um, go, go, I already forgot. Gagauz. Gagauzian people. Mm -hmm. They have Ukrainian people. They have. Uh, Russian people, they have Bulgarian people, they have Romanian people, and they have Moldovian people, but basically... And Roma but, people and Jewish people. But, but basically all of them would be Moldovians, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. I mean, ethnically, we have many ethnic, uh, ethnics, but uh, most of them, cons I mean, most of the people consider themselves as Moldovians. And they speak Moldovian. Yeah, I mean, 
not all of them because okay it's as well a bit uh, one of uh, one of the issues because what? there are some regions where people didn't learn uh, our language oh because same same here and um, I, yeah and actually um, yeah there are some some difficulties in this regard but now I think the situation is is going to improve because more and more people like from other ethnicities starts to learn uh, our language mm -hmm. and for example the new generation uh, I know a lot of people who already speak the, the language and and there are not any issues oh thank you thank you <laughs> thank you so would you say that it is changing basically yeah I think situation is improving um, and it's important to I don't know to establish cooperations and to always communicate with each other and not to, to raise the hate speech or something like that mm. and I think we are quite tolerant nation so uh, we got to to have like common language with uh, other ethnicities from our country um, and yeah and I hope it will maintain because for example when, when there arises some ethnicity issues were were some misunderstanding as it as it is in Catalonia it, it it's not good for everyone it's not good for anyone because people start to to it, it can go even to to civil wars and and, and even worse in this mm. regard so what is the outlook then for you in Moldova are you planning to stay or will you be yes. the one of those millions of people who want to go I, I still cannot grasp that that people from Moldova go to Russia. It's somewhat somewhat difficult to see what would be attractive about going. To, they they're going to uh, work, right? Yeah, due to the language mainly, I think. Because oh, because they know the language. Yeah, because ah. okay, I know English, but most of the population do not know English. So, except of the young generation mm -hmm. we are studying it now. But See, that's the difference b between you and the Russians then. Because for Russians, even the young generation doesn't really speak that much English. Mm, I don't know. Actually, it depends from from person to person, even even in uh, even in Moldova. Um, yeah, and in, in around the surrounding of youngsters around me, mm. a lot of them know English. But I could not quite say about most of them. I mean, even at faculty, I'm studying law in English, mm. so I'm like an anglophone department studying. Yeah. And there are a lot of people around me speaking English, and I feel that English is well known, but I cannot say about people from other surroundings. Mm -hmm. And I can, I suppose it's not, not all the places people know well English. But yeah, but I think the, the situation is improving. The situation is improving and more and more people know it. What's the situation with uh, communications in your, in Moldova? Do you have high-speed internet, Wi-Fi, all over? Uh, yeah, somewhere? actually, yeah, we have one of uh, we are countries we found with one of the uh, speedest internet in, what? in the world. Really? Yeah, oh. it's very fast, I mean. So now we need to measure who is faster then. Latvia is one of, one of the fastest yeah. as well. Maybe, maybe, because actually, I don't know about the ranking now, but once upon a time we were, I think, the second one after after Korea. Mm -hmm. I mean, not, not now, but oh, in, in the past, because uh, we started to develop our um, our all this system of internet in in long time ago. Mm -hmm. Uh, so it was very uh, very high quality and um, speed internet do a lot of uh, tourists go to Moldova <coughs> um, if I'm not wrong it's up to 20,000 tourists per year that's that it's sounds a quite quite low number yeah quite quite low yeah how come um, you have you, you have probably affordable wine yeah, right? we have affordable wine yeah 
nice um, weather nice weather nice people nice uh, i don't know the nature is quite beautiful and we have now developing um a rural uh, tourism mm. i mean there are a lot of old villages with like old-fashioned uh, uh, houses which were restored mm-hmm. like in that old-fashioned type where you were even like families from from villages which, which can host uh, tourists mm-hmm. and you can go over and you can spend how much time you want like for very very low price i mean because in in a village where people receive 100 of euros you can imagine yourself to with i don't know with some money you can feel as a i don't know as a god where did you go to latvia by bus uh no by plane so we have direct flights to moldova and back um i don't know where direct flights i think no because i fly from through warsaw oh really yeah hmm. but there are quite a lot of connections and now it's developing low-cost companies in in moldova so what was the total price to go to riga 190 euros here and back oh. through warsaw from to here and back 190 yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's not that bad. So, so essentially, ninety-five euros, right? Yeah. Ninety-five euros to to yeah, not that bad. <clears throat> and how long did it take? Uh, around two hours to Warsaw and one and and half, I think, to to Riga. Oh, that's not that bad. So, when if you say that today, when did you say your flight li- goes? Uh, at six o'clock today. When will you arrive? In uh, was it? Was it? Uh, what was the capital? Uh, to Kishno. 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 Yeah. Kishno. Yeah. So when when you when will you arrive at Kishno today? Um, actually, is I'm it the same time zone? Uh, yeah, it's the same time zone. Mm-hmm. I, but I'm not going uh, again. I'm going through Warsaw, but where I'll stay one day to one of my friends to Warsaw. Uh-huh. So I'm not going directly to to <coughs> I see, I see. But you could. But yeah, mm-hmm. I mean, I came here in. I think it took me around seven hours with the layover in in Warsaw. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And yeah, not that bad. Yeah, but in in <coughs> in case of its direct flights, it's much more easier and cheaper. So if somebody goes to Moldova, what would you advise to do? Um, first, second, third? First, I would advise this, um, these uh, wineries, which I was talking about, for example, Krikova. Hmm. Uh, we have Milesh uh, Timic, we have others, uh, companies uh, that, that have uh, underground <coughs> sellers. <coughs> And, uh, yeah, for example, I thought you started talk, talking some criminal activities. No, 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 no. We f- have, for example, in Krikova, there is like a underground city, I would say. With it's a cellar mm-hmm. uh, with a lot of barrels with millions of ballers, mm-hmm. where all the streets are named according to a certain name of wine. And you can go there and and visit different productions. So it's a wine city. Uh, it's a wine city actually, but this underground cellar, mm-hmm. it's I think it's the biggest in the city because it's quite big and you can go even with bus inside. Mm-hmm. Uh, underground. Yeah, in underground. And Sounds impressive. Yeah. Yeah, and it's it's very impressive and very beautiful, and there you can have. Um, uh kind of degustations you can try a lot of kind of wines for an affordable price you can buy a uh, high quality wine for i don't know two three euros per bottle i mean quite cheap for very good wine what's the um, uh, what's the cost of living uh, roughly speaking in uh, man i forget kishinev Ki- Ki- i think we said we say you just kishinev I, th- I think we just say it so brutally simple, Kishnev. Kishnev, it's okay, Kishnev as well. It's so, but but we the original pronunciation would we be Kishinev. 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 Ki- Kishinev. Yeah. Sounds almost Japanese, <laughs> doesn't it? Kishinev. Kishinev, maybe, maybe, maybe. So we, we Kishinev. So what what would be the rough rough estimation 
of cost of living in Chisinau uh, um, in a month? And let's say in the city center. If you would have to pay for a host, for a yeah, renting, renting for transport, I would say three, four hundred euros. There will be also, let's say, gas, electricity. Everything. All, all, mm -hmm. I mean, yeah, something like three hundred. It's and how big of a city is? How many people do live in Kishnau? Um, officially around seven hundred, but we're like uh, small cities and villages around. Seven hundred. That would be and quite small. <laughs> seven hundred. Oh, seven hundred thousand. Right? Yeah, yeah. So it sounds almost like Riga, because I yeah. think Riga usually had. The estimation between eight hundred uh, to nine hundred thousand. Yeah, people. but I mean, I mean, with this uh, suburbs, with small cities and villages around it, it's around one million, I think. Is um, the the center of Kishino somewhat comparable to the this center of Riga? Uh, do you mean in the sense you have an old town, you have the surrounding center? Um, the uh, trams, trolleys. Yeah, it's, I think it's similar in this mm -hmm. regard. We have like old part or old city, I would say, old town. Um, the center is like a square, square of big nationality, national assembly, kind of an assembly where we declared our independence. Mm. And there is government. There is. Um, church where where parliament the presidency and a lot of like important building buildings i didn't i didn't ask you do you live in kishno uh yes during studies i'm living in kishno mm -hmm. however uh, i'm originally from kriulen where's that uh it's not far from uh, kishno it's around 40 kilometers i see and yeah and my family and summer i'm spending there in uh, in Krivlen. it's a small town I'd say mm -hmm. um, and as well uh, you asked about what the tourists have to do besides this visiting this uh, this companies of wine um, he or she can go to um, to this rural tourism see how people live to, to 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 live among people in in these small villages where a lot of nature uh, beautiful forest, uh, I don't know, rivers, uh, lakes, and um, uh, there's there's no access to the sea, right? No, no. How so? How far is the man? I'm I'm totally blind about Moldova. If I if I imagine where it would be on the map, I would guess it should be somewhere at least near the Black Sea, but I'm not sure. Yeah, it's near. I mean, we have no um, access. I mean, to to the sea, but we have. An access to yeah. how uh, far do you have to drive to the to the sea? Um, I don't know exactly, but I think around one hundred kilometers. Yeah, oh, that's not that bad. It's not it's not far away, but we have um, access to Dunary. Dunary. So what? What's that? Uh, it's a big river of Europe, which I mean we have. Don't know. Hmm? Don't know. Do now maybe it's right in English, yeah. So what what is the we, name in Moldavian? Dunere. Dunere. Yeah, and we have a port there, mm. so we have access through that port to to the sea. I mean, there are a lot of ships and stuff like that, mm. and cargo and. Mm -hmm. so, yeah, I mean we have not a beach or kind of that, but through that river because it's, I mean it's direct access. And it's not far away from from that port. Mm -hmm. So all right, let's say a Latvian tourist goes to Kishno, rents an apartment, and drives around uh, there for a month for three hundred or four hundred euros. Goes mm -hmm. to the wineries, gets all drunk. So what does he do next? Um, I think one of uh, one of the tourist points in in our country is to go to Transnistria to what it says we it's called um, it's an actual autoproclaimed republic not republic autoproclaimed region of our of our country you mean a separate region yeah a separate region the, 
Tā kas ir? Nu, vai tu kaut ko steidzies pats? Ko? Tu kaut ko steidzies? Nu, sevišķi kā vēl tie sadegribāt. Un vai jūs ar mamu šodien? Nē, nav. Es viens pats esmu. No balsts vienkārši atbrauc? Nē, nē, jūs jūrum labi. Ā, nu labi, labi. Nē, es sāku pēc kādām 20 minūtēm. So, actually, it's a region, mm-hmm. it's quite a difficult situation with it. Because uh, we have in 1992 a civil war. With that region? Yeah. Look at you. Look at you. All all wartime people. I mean, it's a lot of... I mean, we do not have... Why? What was the reason? Um, there was not any proper reason. It was just political things, political issues between, between, they, they just I mean, said, they just claimed that their wine is better. Um, it's not necessarily something among people. I mean, we people from this region, Transnistria and from Moldova, we, we do not have any issues. Mm-hmm. And but that's a region can, in Moldova, right? Yeah, it's a part of Moldova. And I mean, we can travel almost easily because it's according to custom. you, it's a part of Moldova, right? If I, yeah, but they them? consider themselves as an independent country, but nobody recognizes them. All right. Kind of. But it's, yeah, it's an economical issue because it was created for smuggling, for different things like that. You mean the region was created? Yeah, wh- one of the theories for the creation of a region is for... Because actually... It's not that old then. Hmm? It's not... The region is not that old. Yeah, it's from 1992 they proclaimed. Oh, well, that's cool. Proclaimed that, that, That's so cool. Can you imagine? I mean, that was uh, almost the time of of our birth, almost. Yeah, it was soon soon after we we proclaimed independence, mm-hmm. and we had a small civil war with with that region. Yeah, uh, yeah, and it's quite a sensitive issue in our country. And what's the region? Transnistria called. Transnistria. It's like Transnistria. Yeah. Transnistria. Why? Why that name? Because we have a, a river. Trans would be something passing. Yeah, we have a river called Nistru. Oh, all right. Uh, and basically, this river divide mainly uh, Moldova, all the region which is under the authority of Chisinau. Yeah. And that autoproclaimed uh, republic. Oh, the region. Is so it big? It's not big. It's um, so it it is long. So, long uh, like uh, this or long like that? Uh, long like that, like in in um, uh, vertically. Vertically, I would say in uh, in in a latitude. It's mm-hmm. it's it's width, but uh, the 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 width between. Moldova and Ukraine, I mean between our region which we control and Ukraine, which is um, this region called Transnistria, it's around 10-15 kilometers. So your direct neighbor is U- Ukraine, right? Yes. So does that have to do anything with the region in general? Because Ukraine since 2014 has their own issues with people claiming that they're autonomous. Um, it's, it's, actually, it's the wine, man, I'm telling you. Probably all they are just drinking their their wine, thinking, "No, we are separate. Yeah, we are separate." I don't you, know. Because you, Ukrainians <laughs> probably drink also wine, right? Uh, I would imagine. Yeah, yeah, maybe some imagine. regions. Yeah. Um, actually, I don't think it it's quite um, quite difficult to solve this issue because we do not have. I mean, we are the same people. Um, the same religion, the same views, the same way of thinking, everything. It's it's a political issue, and it was uh, issue. It it remain in in the state it is now. Uh, it's due to political reasons. I mean, it's not economic to, reasons, right? D- yeah, political economic. If you the way you are describing that trans yeah. trans what was it? Transnistria. Transnistria. Sounds a cool region. Sounds like a cool region. Yeah, why not? But I mean, it's used for a lot of, a lot of things like to smuggle to, nah, to nah. things like that. Stuff but happens. Yeah, but it's a good touristic point for tourists because 
were like um, kind of uh, communist country, a kind of you because mean still no, they are not communist because they have many parties, they have a lot of oligarchs and stuff like that, but the. Uh, they maintained some of the feature, features of a communist period and the symbolics of a communist period. Wait and a second, because for instance in Latvia, I think it's totally criminal to use that uh, sim symbols. Uh, so for you, no, no? you no. still have that. I don't yeah. know what's it called. The the, you know what I mean. Yeah, yeah. It's, yeah oh, that's as interesting. far as I know, it's it was not uh, prohibited. I think in. In the beginning of 90s, it was prohibited, but after that, it was allowed. But oh, yeah. that's true. Um, and um, so you are saying that Transnistria would be a nice region to go for, for the tourist. Yeah. After he has drunk the wine, he can. Yeah, it's. Uh, and what it's does quite, he do there? Um, to see the capital, it's quite specific. Their uh, self-proclaimed capital. Mm -hmm which is Tiraspol and there's a nearby city called Bender mm -hmm. or Tegina and which is quite specific as well and you can see a lot of things where there where self-proclaimed uh, parliament and, and stuff like that and there is as well um, um, a citadel an old citadel in, in this small in this near city mm -hmm. Bender which is very very old and it's very beautiful that citadel mm -hmm. i mean it's like from medieval times how it was constructed and um so it's not so it's not necessarily a dangerous place that a tourist could go just yeah look at all i mean the i was myself as well and it's but they are still sort of uh, thinking that they are separate from moldova yeah that's yeah. funny but i mean I have colleagues my at at university which come from there because actually what, what do they think about uh, themselves about the situation there are people with different views there are people that want to their region to become independent but they have none of the issues with us there are people that want to join us I mean I, I, I don't know too many people to to say what is average thinking of people from from that region because I know people with both views um, but all the people I know from that region they are friendly there I mean it's political issues even though we can have uh, uh, politically different point of views we can agree and we can speak we can so are you saying that they are considering themselves autonomous but they are not really autonomous right because the state can tell them something to do and they have to do it otherwise they get some sanctions or whatever because it sounds no. like it sounds uh, the way you're describing the transnistria region it sounds like a municipality nothing more than a municipality no, 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 no. no they have their self-proclaimed government which yeah, but nobody, recogni nobody recognizes nobody, nobody it, Nobody right? recognizes them, but de facto they, they control the, the region. Does that mean that also the state authorities don't go in there? Because uh, in that case they do recognize it. No, state authorities do not exercise control on, on that region. Ooh, that, then the region is even cooler. Yeah. It's I guess, a I, lot. I guess I guess you did a good job. Of, of advertising Moldova it sounds like fun <laughs> it's a lot of interesting things to do and and um, and people are quite interesting and welcome and I don't know at least Russian if if you come from from Latvia and you know Russian or in English I think you can you can get uh, many young people who know English hmm. uh, at least in in cities um, but if you don't, I don't know, if you go approach one person, the second, the third one will definitely know English. Uh, and yeah, and we have actually, we have a long and interesting history because... You mean Moldova? Yeah, because this region was populated with, uh, 
was populated with many tribes and many nations like w- like Kukuten Tripolia it sounds like it would be the same people living there today it's just that probably uh, they have all, uh, other maybe, names maybe we have roots but I mean it, it's considered like different um, different nations which evolved different cultures mm-hmm. and Kukuten Tripoli was actually actually it was discovered that they were the first nation it was around five thousand years ago but started to grow vineyard like 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 uh, to, to, to to take care of it and stuff like that i would guess the mesopotamians were the first <laughs> no i mean Mo- mesopotamians did wine as well but they didn't grow the vineyard like What's intentionally the- they didn't had to care of it they just go somewhere and found, find hmm. it's what anthropologists you, mo- you might say. want you you might want to double check on that fact Oh, I checked it. It's about <laughs> what say anthropologists. I mean, I mean uh, besides it, we had we had tribes like uh, 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 from uh, from Mongolia, and you know well, when they, they did when, come, yeah. when they came in region and they had uh, one of their biggest fortresses in Europe. They had in uh, in uh, old Orge. Older he, we call it or Hailvek. Mm-hmm. Yeah, small village. Um, uh, we have other a lot of tribes from Skiffs, from Tatars, from uh, I don't know, um, got Gothic uh, population as well was in this region, mm-hmm. and it's considered they uh, they Christianize us, but. It's it, there a lot of a lot of stories about coming different. Do you mean that? Do you mean to say that the Germans basically came? The uh, Germans were the ones who Christianized Europe, right? Um, I don't know if we can consider gods as as Germans because Germany in Germ and German. I thought na- I thought nation. so that the Goths came from that region. Yeah, they came from that region, but it wasn't the notion of of German at the time. Oh, well, yeah, sure, but still. Yeah, I mean, we can say so. Yeah. We can say so. And then we... They we probably had, drank beer, so it counts. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, we had a lot of wars with uh, with Roman Empire. And there Who is, didn't, yeah. Yeah, and there, there were some huge wars, and there is even a column, in like a huge column in um, uh, in Rome, which was built by Trajan after um, having some wars, some battles with uh, with people living here, mm-hmm. because they were, I mean, the people here were very powerful as well, and there were some great uh, battles. So in that region, we were called um, ducks or gets. I mean, quack j- quack j- ducks. <laughs> oh no, we call it in in our language. Jets or Dutch. Um, I, I don't think how I don't know exactly how it would be in English, but yeah. Right. So it the, the the history is quite long. There were different nations coming and going out of this region. Sure. Um, and uh, and you can hear and listen of a lot of stories from people telling about about our ancestors. We, for example, were under the Ottoman uh, rule around 400 years. So we were like kind of a autonomy uh, of uh, Ottoman Empire. Mm-hmm. And there are a lot of, um, of events happening. Meanwhile, we have a lot of, um, of our, I would say, rulers who took the power and started to fight with Ottoman, Empo- of Ottoman Empire. And there are a lot of battles actually in which we, as a smaller region uh, with small army, we defeated huge uh, Ottoman Empire armies. We defeated Poland, Polish armies, uh, and initially we we had some uh, battles with uh, with Hungarian Empire because actually they first. 
founded here kind of uh, state. Is Hungary next to you? No, but it was in old old time ago. Hmm. So what's your relations now to to Turkey? Uh, I think now we are quite good. We don't have any issues with them. Mm -hmm. Even they they will restore now our and there is a process of restoration of our uh, presidency building by the Turkish uh, the Turkish money. Why? I don't know. There were some agreements and interesting. And yeah, and they have many interesting projects. For example, uh, one of uh, I think it's it's a project which had a great impact on our country. Is that not Turkey actually, but one of a uh, of a Turkish uh, businessman. Uh, he founded here uh, a Moldovan Turkish. Uh, Lyceum high school kind mm -hmm. of where which is considered the best for the high high uh, quality studies for students from high school mm -hmm. because there are a lot of professors uh, like of very high rank and uh, and uh, students I mean children but study at this uh, at these uh, high schools, because there are some of them, uh, they uh, usually take a lot of uh, places in international Olympiads on, on math, on physics, chemistry and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So so it's a huge impact on, on our education. Uh, you know what I want to ask you? Yeah. Who's the most famous Moldovian? Stefan Chalmaria. What does he do? He he was our ruler from one hundred fourteen uh, fifty seven to fifteen zero five. No, no, that doesn't uh, help. Yeah, it, it was it's considered our the, the ruler that 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 uh, ruled our country uh, forty seven years. So it's the longest period, and during that period it it uh, growth a lot our economy our. Uh, political status, our the, the situation of people, and it's considered our the greatest the, the, the greatest ruler. So we have his image on all our banknotes. Uh, we have his monument in like the center the center of a city. And what's nowadays the most famous Moldovan? Who's who from those who are living now? Um. Uh, I don't know, I don't know. Because for Latvia, because for I, I Latvia, you could say for Latvia, you could say I think uh, uh, an NBA player might be mm -hmm. might be the mo most known I Latvian. I think it is. It's not necessarily a person, but is a no, no. It's it's exactly what I mean. A no, person. no, no, no. About you, yeah. But I mean, from Moldova, it's not exactly a person which is well known, uh, mostly well known. But it is a band. All right. And uh, it's called Carla's Dreams. If you heard about it. No. But so what about them? Yeah, so it's a modern band from from our country. Mm -hmm. And it's interesting that the, the singer uh, is uh, the vocalist is always wearing a mask. All right. So people don't know who is him. Mm -hmm. But he is very 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 popular. I mean uh, his uh, his uh, uh, songs on YouTube got her up to, uh, if I'm not wrong, to hundred uh, of millions of uh, of uh, visualization, while our country is two and half or let's say three and a half million of people officially, um, and it's listened in. Uh, Everybody has to click. Yeah, ten, ten, Carlos time, dreams. ten times or one hundred times, and then you go. <laughs> no, it's it's actually it's very popular in in many countries, starting from Russia. I heard people from uh, Vladivostok. It's like far far Russia, which are listening him from Armenia, from um, from some Baltic countries, from Ukraine, from Romania, from Belarus. 
So from, I guess it's it's it might be uh, popular in the eastern countries then. In in the eastern countries mostly yes, mm. but in Romania as well. Cause and Romania would be western. Eastern west. It's actually Central Europe. Yeah. But okay. So from say, from Moldova is it to the west? Oh, uh, to the west. Oh. Yeah. yeah. Right. Um and uh, yeah and the most popular song of him is or, or of that band is uh, Hope Eroina or Wait Eroina. A second, they do sing only in Moldova? Uh, in Russian as well, in English. Oh. So they have all right and yeah and it's quite quite popular so you'd say the most famous people are probably entertainers band. yeah bad mm -hmm. band um yeah i i cannot say about we have sportsman as simona halib but Who's that? what does he do um she's like oh, she? taking very weightlifting Mm? A weightlifter? Yeah, wait. Yeah, mm. exactly. And he's, she's a world champion in this field. Um, also Olympic? Yeah. And uh, I don't know. Maybe maybe many, many people know about uh, Yojan Doga, which is a compositor of classic music. Mm. Uh, and he, can, he created a lot of great classical musics uh, like like uh, which, which are played everywhere and in many places I, I went in many places and movies I don't know mm -hmm. uh, where are used his uh, his works um, yeah and yeah I think it's 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 quite quite well known at least in 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 the surrounding of people that are listening to classical music by the way do you have a time at the latest when you need to move to the go to the airport because now it's four uh, should, should we wrap it up yeah we can i don't know i mean if you, 10 say, minutes, if you say yeah. you you have your flight at six i guess so yeah we can stay up but, uh, 10 10 more minutes yeah it's okay well yeah well we can we can just then start start to finish i guess yeah so what would you be your conclusions about your stay in latvia then do you do you consider latvia a place where you would like to come back at one time or another yeah it's definitely it's very beautiful and and i, I fortunately i had in the, the, the possibility to see all the city because mm -hmm. uh, for example, there is a lot of art of art of Art Nouveau here. A lot of buildings from Art Nouveau. There are a lot of um, buildings built from even from medieval times. A lot of museums and and I would like to visit all these. Really? Um, yeah, I'm interesting in in all this. Dude, I if like I if I come to Moldova, don't come with any museums for me. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, and people find different uh, interesting spots. I mean, even in Moldova, there are a lot of interesting museums, but I don't know if if uh, people that are listening us are like. I guess, I guess you know what might be interesting for people in uh, for all age groups would be the historical type of museums where you see some 20th century events. Because uh, I've heard many people uh, who come to Latvia, <laughs> they enjoy the occupational museum or occupation museum. Okay. I'm not sure. So it, it sort of demonstrates or, or illustrates the, the, well, I'm not sure whether or not it's uh, well established internationally, but I would guess so, that the USSR occupied for more than 50 years, well, basically 50 years, uh, the Baltic states, for instance, right? And so we had different different things occurring during that time. And so that's the specific museum basically for as, well essentially 50 years i guess it's mm. it's, it's sort of a, a niche museum because usually museums would be yeah, some, yeah. something that's oh generally speaking for the past hundreds of years right but mm -hmm. that is one museum that sort of reflects on on the specific time when uh the ussr started or occupied uh, Lat latvia for instance but i guess they have some some exhibits uh, about the baltics in general 
Mm-hmm. So yeah, it's that that might be something uh, differentiating, I guess, for most people. But not sure whether or not for Moldovians, because you probably have something similar. Yeah, I think we have um, uh, many similar things. I don't know if it. I don't know if it would be very popular for Moldovans. I mean, at least for people from my country, uh, because it's it was not. For far ago and people still remember many things mm-hmm. I don't know for example we the only the only thing we have in museums regarding Soviet period is is two rooms in our national museum so we have many museums but not exactly about uh, about Soviet period of time we had about culture about biology anthropology and many many things but not necessarily about uh, such kind of museum mm-hmm. I think it, it's more interesting for for people from western countries which have not they're not well known yeah. with what happened and yeah, yeah. That's it, that seems to me the mo- main audience that might be interested yeah. Yeah. yeah sure and you guys in Moldova you have your wine what well, do you have snow in the winter yeah I, oh I really mean, the the weather is quite different in our country we have during winter we had have snow and the weather is it's not either cold either warm it's just perfect Mm -hmm. and um, during summer it is it's quite okay and and the weather is not uh, the the level of humidity in air is not quite high Mm -hmm. So it's uh, bearable. I mean, it's supportable during the summer to to walk to I don't know, be in a city, uh, and we have some rivers where you can go to swim to, and a lot of uh, of lakes. Where I'm a little bit concerned that you are fairly white, because I would imagine you would be tanned in Moldova during the uh, during June. Um, Actually, I'm white, but I I don't think it's the the usual color of all people from Moldova. Because the sun is pretty hot over there, right? Now, in June. Uh, Now, in June, is pretty hot. Yeah, it's pretty hot and it's pretty warm. Mm -hmm. Uh, No, I'm definitely not the 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 type of color of skin that uh, yeah because because I, I would have expected you to be almost like a Sicilian no no it's no no we are not I mean I saw for example many people from Latvia and we I think we are almost the same not so white but almost almost the same yeah might be yeah, yeah I think yeah. it's not it's not a huge difference well I guess in Moldova you have more, definitely more sun than in Latvia yeah we definitely have more sun mm. But a good part is that we have a lot of trees. I mean, all the roads, uh, especially capital, is full of parks, of forests. Um, and you can go from one side of a, of a capital to another side without going out of shadow, except crossing the streets, for example, I don't know. And, uh, uh, and it's, not, it's not an issue, I think. Yeah, yeah. And, yeah. In general, to to add a bit about my city, I think it's um, it's worth visiting due to um, due to architecture, to to people, to many interesting places, um, a lot of parks, even forests. You, you can go from one part of a city to another, and to go literally through a forest. Um, and and the most interesting, I think, is to go to villages. To have I don't know riding through um, through all these roads to visit old monasteries. We have very very old monasteries. We have um, archaeological spots which are very very old. What's a monastery? I'm um, kind of blank right uh, now. Monastery uh, where we're living. All these uh, people like in um, like a church. But uh, where you mean for monks? For monks, exactly. Oh, all right. Where they are living, and we right. have a lot of beautiful and old. We have um, one of our famous monarchies, 
uh, where it's a church is in um, is in a cave mm. for example and yeah and I think it's worth visiting them because they're lo- in a lot of places like uh, hidden from civilization there are a lot of forests around a lot of beautiful spots so yeah. seems to me that I can sum it up quite easily so Latvian goes for a month to uh, Kishnev uh lives there for around roughly 300 400 euros goes goes to underground vineyards no but to wine cellars uh mm-hmm. then afterwards goes to trans nistria nistria to just mess around whatever <laughs> and then at least go to goes to a cave church yeah definitely yeah to pray to pray the sins away <laughs> and then yeah the month is up yeah, all right. Uh, the the time is definitely for you to get going, I guess. So we can we can finish it. And yeah, if you are around in Latvia, sometime just give me a call or let me know. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Thank you. So that's. Yeah,